Hi, moguls and film addicts. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Marilyn, and today we have a very special guest for you. Our guest is Paul Heth. Paul is the executive chairman and CEO at Cairo Companies. Paul is an entrepreneur that focuses on film content and cinema film production. Paul, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having me. Very pleasure to meet you and to be on with you today. My yeah. pleasure. Yeah, and um, for our audiences that's tuning in, Paul is coming to us live from his car. We're recording from his car. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm just kind of very mobile today. You know, in COVID, our offices have become our, our studies in our house and our cars, and the car's been the best one for me to kind of get away from the kids and, and a little bit more quiet. So I hope you don't mind this mobile studio today. Yeah, and you're coming um, all the way from Florida today, right? Yes, I'm in Florida this week. Yes, I am. And I'm very fortunate. It's a beautiful, sunny day to, today. And I see a lot of people very optimistic about, you know, what's happening the last few days in, in our country. And so I'm really blessed to, to speak with you today on a sunny day. Yeah, great. A good change is coming. And um, so, Pa, I want to ask you, growing up, what was one of your favorite movies? Well, it's interesting. My favorite movie, um, I would have to say, would be the, the first Star Wars from jo uh, Mr. Lucas. Um, that that event kind of really kicked something off in me. So I was not quite a teenager. I think I was 13 or 14. I think it came out in the mid-70s, maybe 76, 77. I remember I was visiting my father, and we drove by a theater in San Francisco, and there was like a line around the block, and I got very excited. So my dad let me off with like 5 or $6, which was a fortune for a 13-year-old then. And I got in line. I had to wait for like hours to get in, but people were so excited to get in to see Mr. Lucas's movie that people were just abuzz and everybody was talking. It was like a festival environment. And I was like this teenager was just like, my eyes got so big. And then I finally got in the theater and got a ticket, watched the movie, was absolutely just enthralled by the movie. And, but the other thing that excited me was to look to, to see a crowded theater and just to see that community reaction to such splendor and storytelling and, and uh, on the screen, that that was the moment that kind of kicked for me the, the love of cinema, including the theater itself, the full, the full lobby, the smell of the popcorn, the buzz, the music, everything. So that was probably a seminal event for me in terms of loving everything about movie going. Yeah, Star Wars is amazing. And uh, one of my friends was like, oh, and so what color are the lightsabers? And he's a director. Um, we were in the on the lot contest with Steven Spielberg. Uh, he got in and I just, you know, I got like to enter. And I said pink and he's never let me live that day. <laughs> down <to hell. laughs> so yeah, yeah so uh, we love the Star Wars. And yeah, so also, um, you know, um, I wanted to know what film from the Criterion Collection inspired your 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 career path to becoming this amazing film producer and film executive. Well, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say from, from, again, I'd, I've been more focused on, and I, and I understand we're just kind of, you and I are just knowing each other, but I'm, I more got involved in, in the foreign films because I, I ended up actually starting my career as a, as a 29 year old in terms of this business. I was a soldier first, you know, I came from a family of very limited financial means. And I went in the, in the army to uh, kind of get some money in my pocket and they paid for my education. And then I served my country until the first desert storm. When I got out, I ended up starting a business in Russia, a single screen cinema in the lobby of a hotel in 1993. And I started falling in love with all of the, the kind of the Russian and, you know, Fellini and Bondarchuk and all these great uh, foreign film producers. And my favorite foreign film that, that excited me the most was probably that there's a Russian director called Nikita Mikhalkov oh, and he yes. made a movie called Burnt, he made a movie called Burnt by the Sun which to me was just just stunning storytelling drama epic it really really was to this day I'd have to say it's one of the most special movies that I've ever seen and enjoyed and in addition to the movies that I've been been fortunate to participate in so I say Burnt by the Sun oh, which by the way well, it won an Academy Award for Best Foreign Picture, I think, in the 90s as well. Wow, that's an amazing story. Thank you for serving. Um, we really appreciate that. And look what happened. Like, you went somewhere 
um, like, you know, my dad served as a, a Navy pilot. So you end up going to Russia and fell in love with the Russian country and actually opened one of the first cinemas. That's just an amazing, incredible story. And then, uh, yeah, so um, I wanted to ask you, so what are your favorite directors and like, are you, you know, is there a favorite um, scene in a movie with a director shot that you love that just blows you away? Yeah, yes. Uh, so I think, but again, I've been very blessed that, you know, in Russia, we have a company called Monumental. I have a partner who's actually from Germany. His name's Mikhail Schlicht. And we've been blessed to be involved as producers, or executive producers, about 15 movies uh, to date um, that mainly, and we've been very blessed to have a great partnership over the years with Sony and with Fox and, and with one large picture with Disney. Um, and the, the director who I think is an absolute genius is Fedor Bondarchuk. And he made a movie, I don't know if you've seen it, it was released globally that did quite well. It was called Stalingrad, which was, of course, a depiction of the the World War II horrific battle of Stalingrad in the city of Stalingrad. So that would be, that director is an absolute genius. And the shot, I would say there that there's a shot where the German, um, there's several shots that, that are exciting, but, but I'd say of, of that movie, there, there's a, there's a very tender scene where there's four or five of these Russian soldiers that are fighting house by house and they're collectively trying to looking after one refugee girl. And there's this, there's a shot of them on the steps of, of um, one of the burnout houses. And it's so intimate and it's so beautifully shot that without saying anything, you can see the love that these four men had for this girl and that they would do anything to save her. It's all captured in the essence of the shot. So that, and of course, I, I'm not talking about big action scenes, but that to me is a genius of such a fabulous filmmaker that can convey such intimacy, emotion, love, peril, all with the, how he framed this uh, this, this moment. So that would be my favorite shot. Uh, that is a stunning shot. Yeah, just to be able to do, like you said, frame the shot where the emotion comes through. Uh, it is a true master storyteller. And yeah, because today we have like all the CGI and the effects and boom, boom, boom. But, you know, that's why I'm so in love with the masters. Like, like you said, uh, Stalingrad, a beautiful movie. Thank you for sharing that. And also, so, you know, uh, you produce. So is there any, and I know that you have acted. So if you could have um, produced or acted in a scene, was there one that you're like, oh, I would have loved to have done that scene in a movie as an actor or produced that well, as a producer? My, my acting was, was just as a, as was a youngster more to the, was to the stage. And so that was my, my father was a, was a producer, excuse me, a director, writer, producer on the stage. So as a youngster, I got to do that as a very, very young person. In terms of producing, um, are, you, are you saying what, what's the favorite thing that we've produced or something we'd like to produce? What would what, what have loved to have produced? Um, well, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> I, I'll tell you the thing that we, the, 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 the genre that my partner, I, partner and I have focused on is historical genre. And, you know, we love particularly contemporary um, storytelling. Like, well, I'd say from, let's say, 1940s, through through kind of contemporary time, so I I would I would look to to me the the I'm trying to think here. So you're you're putting me on the spot here. What would I like to produce? Hmm. Let me let me think about that just for two or three minutes because I have four or five in my mind and I want to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I'm friends with some of the producers, but let, let me come back to you. Uh, okay. Then what is your list? I'll, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one that I think was just fabulous. Uh, like the English Patient, I thought that was wonderful. Oh, sorry. and. Yeah, and I'd say that that one wasn't. It was set in a historical time frame, but or or moment. But I, I thought the the storytelling was epic. I actually had a chance in Moscow to meet uh, Ray Fiennes. He he actually came present the film at our theater at the time, and so I'd say that'd be one I'd love to have been involved with those those type of storytelling that take a contemporary historical event um, and then wrap in all the emotions and things around it. So I, that'd be the one for me. Yeah, and then I I have a question. What's the name of your theater in Russia? Is it still open? Could someone want to? Is it open, or will it be open? Is no, no. We well, we we have uh, we're the largest cinema co or one of the largest companies in Russia, so we have a lot of them. But our, in Russia, we we have a brand called Caro, and I'm very proud when we opened in Russia that the, basically movie going was at an all time low. So the entire box office of Russia in 1993 
was approximately two or three million dollars. And Russia, prior toward prior to the introduction of the modern economy into Russia, which we call perestroika, when Mr. Gorbachev left and they started kind of a economic system, uh, there was a ten thousand screens in Russia and. Uh, mainly single screens and Soviet producers made some amazing, amazing movies over many years, and it was supported by the state. But starting in the early '90s, the state support went away, and movie going went away. And this is kind of an analogy today with streaming, which I always tell people. So when I got to Russia in '93, as a as a young person with stars in my eyes and six hundred dollars in my pocket, by the way, uh, and people told me. Oh, people won't go back to the theater. Everybody's watching TV and they're watching pirated VHS cassettes. Everybody has like a cheap TV in their in their house with a with a VCR. If you remember those, yeah. and I said, no, no, no. I I believe strongly that movie going is such a com- community group event that 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 it's so special. And Russia has such a tradition; they'll come back. So we started with our my credit cards. I started the first theater, then in. 96, and this is how life is, I'm sure, as a producer, you understand this. I was at an airport lobby, and I met someone from Kodak, and I pitched them to invest $2 million with me to create a showcase cinema right in downtown Moscow. And much to my amazement, they invited me to London. I scrapped together, scraped together every nickel I had. Oh, my God. the cheapest ticket. Yeah, but I went to London, I, and I, they actually so they invested with us. And we opened in 1996 Kodak Kinomir right in Pushkin Square in Moscow. And we had all the stuff, the marble lobby, the brass rails. I kind of used the, if you know Fifth Avenue in, in, in New York, we kind of used that window style of the, of the old-fashioned department stores for the one sheets. Music. We opened in the morning at tickets at $3. And everyone said, no one, no one will come. We had lines for almost two kilometers. And by the end of the day, tickets were $7. And in that year, that, that, that cinema was doing $16 million a year in business and, and several million emissions on 600 screen, uh, seats. We were starting screens from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the morning. And that, I'm very proud as, you know, and I'm, I'm married to an unbelievable Russian woman. I have Russian children. We, you know, my children have been uh, uh, baptized. And my point is, as an American, I was very proud that that part of our, our culture kind of seamlessly worked with their part. So that started the modern. Russian film uh, sector a moment. And then over the years, that, that started local production. And I've invested in three or four of the largest cinema companies and production companies. And today, cinema, prior to, prior to COVID, was over a billion dollar business in, in Russia. And can you think? And now it's the number one market in Europe for admissions, almost 220 million admissions a year. And coming out of COVID, by the way, we're number three in the world. And so I always tell people that with this COVID situation, I kind of go back to my experience there where everyone said cinema was done, but once people could experience cinema again and it was properly priced and we had all that, those things that add to a great experience, people came back with such love and, and, and enjoyment. I think we'll see that moment again once the authorities in various countries get COVID under, under check. So anyway, that was my, my experience. I, I love that. So can, um, because we have our, our, our girl's guide to investing podcast is, or, uh, is listening. We have our moguls listening that like a lot of people that want to be actors, writers, directors, filmmakers. So we, you were in Russia with $600 in your pocket and then you yes. pitched to Eastman Kodak. Can you kind of just tell us your journey a little sure. bit on, on yeah. how you started? I mean, because you I, literally I, transformed the Russian motion picture industry into one of the world's top markets for film entertainment. Right. Paul well, Heth did that today on the show, everyone. Make note of this name because uh, that is an amazing story. Uh, he just was your, we got to make a film about you, Paul, because this is the underdog, the superhero's journey to all, all the incredible odds. You had like this hope in your heart in this idea and you're so inspiring and likable. This this journey is a you know a fascinating. I'm so excited you're sharing well, with well, you. Well, thank you. And and I, I would say that a couple things, which I would tell any young person or anyone of any age. So, and my heroes have been of all ages. And so, first thing I try to do, I, I try to I always try to emulate someone who's successful, because the great news about that is you can you can see what they did to be successful. So. Um, I get to Russia. I love movies. I start. I get this idea. Me and another American guy who um, we got. We were in a bar 
having drinks and as one does you can inspire particularly as an irishman like me but we got inspired we started that little cinema it led to more conversations and then eastman kodak was a great partner and i so then i said okay i want to build a network of cinemas and kodak at the time we had a big commitment but then they decided not to once the market started showing signs of of stirring and moving they kind of backed away and this is one of the great stories and I hope you appreciate this, but in, in, in a family that's been so wonderful to me. So I, I went to, I went to Las Vegas for show West, which was a big cinema trade show. And at the time um, I couldn't afford to get in and I was staying at an off strip hotel room. Matter of fact, my wife teases me about this, but it was the first hotel hotel room I stayed in. It was like $35 a night. It had mirrors on the ceiling. <laughs> so, and uh, so Sounds I, like I took movie. a, and I, was, I, I literally took a bus to Caesar's Palace and they had this trade show for for the Cinema Association. But I didn't realize that you, did, you had to. And your, your Vegas $35 a night uh, um, hotel with mirrors on the ceiling. <laughs> yeah. Then you went to the yeah. trade show. Yeah, I went to Caesar's Palace when they had, back then it was called, it was called Show West. And that was the, the show that once a year, the studios would present all their movies to all the cinema owners and the press. But the movie stars would show up for these big lunches, and I couldn't afford to buy the tickets. And I soon and my, you know, whatever. But then, this is a great story. So then I met Tim Warner and Steve Gula. Tim Warner went on to be the chief executive officer of Cinemark, which is the largest cinema company in the world, a six or seven billion dollar enterprise. At the time, he ran the trade association, and I met really one of the great men in our industry, a guy named Steve of, of um, Fox Searchlight now. And they took pity on me, so they gave me free tickets to go to the lunch events, and that started a relationship where those two men have been my mentors. Even motion picture uh, production. At the time, he he developed a company called Landmark, and so Art Film and Tim is one of the great cinema executives. So I went to I went there, and then I heard this was just an amazing. I heard Sumner Redstone speak, pictures, and he gave a thrilling speech at Show West, where he talked about he had his, his dream was always to buy Paramount Pictures, and I was standing in this sitting at this table, as the marketing one really knew about, um, and. Someone told me that's the most successful cinema guy ever in terms of building a cinema business. So me being the uh, ambitious young man that I was and still am, I, I actually called his office and tried to get an appointment. I told his assistant that I was the largest cinema operator in Russia. <laughs> now, I didn't tell her that was only one screen, but but it's truthful. I love I love <laughs> I like that. So you it's called. Truthful. Summer yeah. Redstone's office. Hello, how I can I speak to Summer Redstone? It's me, Paul. Yes. <laughs> I love it. And then what happened? Yes. yes. So the, I got an appointment. Okay. So then after a year or two, I got or actually almost three years, I got an appointment finally. And his assistant called me and said, um, "There's a slot for you to come up here and meet Mr. Redstone. We have thirty minutes and." And, um, I, you know, I, can you please go? I was so excited. So I, I got out there again. I got into a very simple room. And then I showed up at National Music's headquarters. And then, then I'm, this is one of the great meetings. Instead of Mr. Redstone, I actually met with Mrs. Redstone, Sherry Redstone. And Sherry and I was a 30-minute meeting turned into an hour and a half meeting. And oh, my gosh. So you so inspiring. You know, I talked about all my vision for cinema and the things I was doing with Kodak Kino Mir, it did, you know, because at that time I'd, I'd introduced VIP seating. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Coffee, ca a coffee shop, um, different kind of seating, uh, pre-show. We were doing a lot of things that people are talking about now, but we were doing this like 20, 30 years ago. And then that led to a great relationship. And then I called on for uh, several years. Once or twice a year, I'd go out to the States and I would, I'd go to Boston and take to explain my ideas and this is very funny like you know as an entrepreneur you don't have so much money so 
I'd always go to the restaurant and say, and I, and I go, man, is my credit card going to work? So <laughs> I'd always go to the HP and work. say, oh hey, here's a hundred dollars cash. If my card doesn't work when I pay for lunch, please draw the cash down so I'm not embarrassed in front of Miss Redstone. Talking, talking, and Kodak Kinnerman became more and more successful. And then Miss Redstone and I formed, we, yeah, then we formed a venture together in in Russia to build a network. But she said, look, together in America called Cinebridge. And in, in 1999 or 2000, we formed the first kind of boutique cinema business in the United States uh, by Howard Hughes Parkway. And we opened one in Philadelphia. But one of the first kind of premium with all the like assigned seating, all these things that, you know, with a, with a, a liquor lounge or with, the, with pre-show Camille, like all the things that people are doing now, we started that. And that became very successful. And, and Miss Redstone and Mr. Redstone, uh, who Mr. Redstone, I met a few times. He was very respectful, but Miss Redstone was everything. She was just fantastic. The, the family, was just very, very kind to me, looked after me. Then um, after a year or two, we I sold my shares in that business back to the, that family. But then they invested with me in Russia and we started a fabulous company called Kinostar. So they founded another company after Cinebridge Ventures Burn. called um, Cin- Kinostar Cinemas. Perspective. Out of six properties, we had three of the highest grossing properties in the world. Alex After Alex. City Bridge together, and of course they were the majority of that business. Uh huh. And we we that was in Moscow, St. Peter. We built some beautiful, stateable theaters. And then uh, later, probably in two thousand nine, Miss Redstone and I bought out uh, Mr. Redstone, uh, Miss the, the company, and we stayed with that investment for a few more years. We sold it. Then in two thousand thirteen, I started. Uh, Uh, I invested in a company called Carol, which we have now, and we're the leading cinema company in Russia. We're like in, and then at that same time, um, we started Monumental Pictures in a joint venture with uh, Sony Pictures. And that's because we wanted, I wanted to stimulate local production. And I still have that business today. And and great producer, Andrew Ronotsky, Konstantin Ernst, uh, great directors like Mr. Bondarchuk, Timor Beck, Mateyev. I mean, so we, we've been very blessed. And then starting um, a couple of years ago, I started being more hands-on and doing our own pictures. So we recently had a picture with Disney that, that came out a few years ago. And we have a big thriller coming out that, that my partner and I produced with a local house called Row 19, which is kind of a shining type movie on a plane that we're very excited to franchise that will launch, that will open in theaters in March or April. And we're also investing heavily now in co-productions, uh, you know, that, that including English language. So I've been very blessed. Redstone was always respectful to and their team, even though I was a fast talking young guy, you know, that I was very lucky. And so I always say that manners, courtesy, be respectful, find a mentor and, 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 and whenever they can give you a minute, take advantage of it, take notes, you know, don't take notes, the first no, because. The first note really starts a conversation in business, in my opinion, and and believe in yourself. And you're gonna make mistakes, and you're gonna you're gonna feel bad that you made a mistake. But the truth is, we all make mistakes. You gotta bounce back, and you know. If you're fortunate to find someone who cares about you and wants to be a partner, do with that. And then I'd also say the other thing, there's also people that want to kind of take your time, separate you from your money, and they're frivolous. At the end of the day, your gut tells you who those people are. So I always try to, and I tell this to my son, really run with lions, really try to be around successful people, try to emulate them, be respectful of their time, be courteous, because nowadays I find a lot of people forget manners and, and are late and, you know, self-important. And, and I just feel like that the most successful people in the world I know, and I've been by far the one are the most focused, the most up-to-date, the most prompt, the most courteous, make the callbacks, return emails, return phone calls. So I, I always trust 
that you, you know if you went with the right people right away. Uh, so I want to uh, I want to recap a little bit because we lost some of um with the uh, interference. So uh, Paul was telling us how um you know he he from his one phone call with Summer Redstone. Three years he got a meeting who he thought was Redstone, but it would be Miss Redstone. And uh, they uh, went into collaboration with Cinebridge Ventures. Then he went on to being the co-founder with Miss Redstone, uh, the CEO of Kinostar Cinemas. Then he got a group of private equity and partners and purchasing Cairo Film Group, which is a leading Russia cinema operator. And he gave um, our listeners advice being kind, etiquette. Um, you know, leave your attitude at the door, make sure you're like, uh, you know, don't take people's time, be grateful, humble, and, um, you know, and have that vision. Because when you're calling, you need to have a vision and something specific when you want people. And it, which has led him to um, his theatrical co production company, Mon Mon Monumental. And Paul has a partnership with Sony Pictures and Fox. And he's just an amazing guy that came from Tampa, went into the military, went to Russia, $600 in his pocket, turned his ideas, turned his vision that that was, I don't think it was ever a dream for him. It was so real to him. And now he is, you know, he has led the transformation of Russia's motion picture into the, one of the world's top markets. And he is a leader in his film. He is an army veteran, graduate of University of Tampa. And University of Tampa honored Paul Heth with the Entrepreneur Service Award. And also in 2018, University of New Haven awarded Heth with an honorary doctor of business and administration degree. Um, we've had inter interference and um, because we're coming live, remote recording. Everyone's probably on Zoom today and going, woohoo, new day, new dawn, change at the change at the big house in America. And so um, Paul was speaking of some films that are coming out that he's more hands on now. And we're excited to know about those films. But, uh, you know, we're excited to see what Carol Film Group is doing, what Monta Mental Pictures is doing. And I was so happy to have him on the show today. And I'll just see if he comes back. Um, if not, we're just going to, you know, let me see. Paul, you there? Did we lose you? Okay. So, I want, uh, Paul, you still there? Yeah, I think I lost him. So I just want to say thanks. I'm so lucky to have him on the show today. Maybe we can record. But for now, I want to just thank all our listeners from Girl's Guide to Investing, all our mogul listeners, and to Filmatics Podcast, all our Filmatic listeners. Thank you for tuning in today with Paul Heth. It was a live recording. Yes. Remote. Oh, here he is. Oh, Paul. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So I was just wrapping it up real quick. So we'll do end of part one and start on part two.